So I'm going to be holding the mic here today. I know that's a little awkward, but I probably need to invest in a better microphone because I just recorded a video and I could barely hear myself. So hopefully this will be better. Um, first things first, today we're going to talk about four different traits, um, making the seven traits, and then we'll do three traits in part three. Um, but I wanted to give kudos specifically today to, to Brene Brown. She is fantastic. Um, her work on trustworthiness has been so inspirational to me, so I'm sharing a lot of that work in the traits today. And I would recommend that if you like today's content, please go check out her Anatomy of Trust um, because this is directly um, taken and synthesized from her work. So if you like this, you will love the Anatomy of Trust by Brene Brown. So go check that out. Um, let's dig into it. Trait number one for today, boundaries. Now, it might seem pretty pretty obvious that you want a partner that respects your boundaries, but it's also really important that you have a partner that sets boundaries too. If I were trying to date somebody and they set no boundaries, I would be worried that they don't feel like they can share how they really feel with me, that they might be harboring resentment over time because they aren't sharing with me those parts of them. So not only is it crucial that somebody doesn't peer pressure us, but that they also set boundaries and actually have their own sense of self. So I really get to know that person, um, who they are, what they value, what's okay for them, what isn't. Um, and obviously, if they push your boundaries or try to force you to do anything, that's definitely not okay. I would recommend that from the get-go, you try to stop that as soon as you can because that is a huge red flag. If you talk to your partner and they're receptive, cool, you might be able to move on. If you talk to your partner and they're defensive or they don't support you setting boundaries, I would run for the hills. So trait number two, reliability. This one is also super important. It's the ability to do what we say we're going to do consistently. So having a partner that if they say, you know, they're going to show up at a certain time, they show up on time. Um, if they say they enjoy something or they're working on something, they do it. It's just the ability to see over time that when they say they're going to do something, it happens and that you can trust in their word, that their word is good. Trait number three for today's video, accountability. This one is extra important because inevitably, all of us are going to mess up, myself included. But what differentiates an emotionally safe person from a non-emotionally safe person is the ability to take ownership and see what our role is in every problem or situation that we face. One of the funny things that I get to see as a therapist that works with couples uh, from time to time is that they will come in and they have their laundry list of reasons um, as to why their partner is, you know, making them upset or what their partner did or their partner's flaws. And when I turn it back to them and I say, okay, so what was your role or maybe what did you struggle with in this situation? You know, they look at me with that like blank face, like what, what are you talking about? And it's so interesting to help them navigate that and figure out, you know, that it is crucial that we take ownership of our own stuff. And if you see that in a partner, hold on to it because the partnerships that I've seen fall apart really can kind of be destroyed by ego and destroyed by someone's inability to really face their own stuff. You know, I've I've been on that journey myself too. It is so hard, but so worth it because if you have a partner that can face themselves, they will grow, they will change, um, and they will work to be a better human and work on all their stuff, which is so important in a relationship. Um, our last trait, fault, which is what Brene Brown coins it, um, is essentially this ability to keep a secret. So if your loved one tells you something in secrecy, do you go tell all your family or do you keep that sacred? Or even do you tell a close friend, right? It's that ability to really honor our partner and not sharing their stuff and not sharing their struggles. This also applies for if you go and like tell your girlfriends or your guy friends every time you have a bad fight and you go into the gory details of like your partner and all the things they struggle with and their insecurities, um, I would say you're bordering on, you know, also not honoring their 
the sacredness of them sharing their life with you and their vulnerabilities and their struggles. So I'm not saying that you can't process things with a therapist or process things with friends and the uh, spirit of wanting to make things better. But we all know that friend that comes and shares all this bad stuff about their partner. Um, and at times it just gets kind of awkward because you're like, really, that's not um, probably what your partner wants to be shared. The other thing, too, is is it's really important that people figure out ways to talk directly to their partner when they're upset about things. Um, and, you know, if you're bonding with people over talking dirt on them or gossiping, that is not a emotionally safe way to create friendships. Um, so just to recap real quick, boundaries, reliability, accountability, and vault. These are all really important traits when it comes to finding a healthy relationship partner. I hope you all are well. We will cover our last three traits tomorrow. And until then, be well, belly breathe, and I'll see you next time.